packed up my bags and hopped on a plane and headed to Perth, Australia. It's my first time here in Perth, so I was so excited to go and check everything out, everything that I could fit in, and I ended up staying in Fremantle Prison in the old woman's block, and that was really cool. I went for a walk and jumped on a ferris wheel and went to eat and drink at Little Creatures. I saw that the weather was going to be good the next day so I decided to hop on a ferry and head to Rottnest Island. It was so beautiful. I'd heard about quokka on the island and I was so excited to see them. They're so cute. One lady said that they're just big rats, but I really disagree. There's about 10,000 of them on the island, so find one for a selfie. The next day I found a cafe called Flora and Fauna that I wanted to check out and it happened to be right next to the Bibbleman Track Foundation office. I popped in and had a chat and although I'd left them behind in New Zealand I was advised to buy some knee-high gaiters. After a few other errands, I hopped on a bus and made my way to Kalamunda. I'd booked a room at Rosebridge House in Kalamunda, and it's a five-star accommodation, which I don't think I've done for myself before. It's quite a luxurious way to start the Bowman track, but definitely recommend. Life is short, right? And we've got to take these chances when we can. It's the night before I start the Bubble Moon track and I'm just getting all ready and all packed up. And this is what's going to hold everything. My 64 litre Z-Pax Art Call Zip. It's a little big but um, I managed to fill it. It's not too hard. It was about 12 kilos when I put it on the airplane. Which is not too bad considering that it has 8 days worth of food. The backpack does let a little bit of water in on the rainy days. So I've got that yellow pack liner just to put everything inside of it and keep it all nice and dry. And yeah, I'll show you what's inside of it. Here I've got my electronics and my diary and my Bibbleman track maps, my toilet paper and trowel, some toiletries, and I've also got some documents because I'm moving to Australia and looking for a job. And then I've got my first aid kit here. Got my Katahdin B3 water filter and my Nalgene glow in the dark one liter. This is my food and kitchen. I just bought a fresh canister of gas today and then my spork and lots of hot drinks. And then I've got my Mac pack sack filled with about eight days worth of food to get me to dwelling up. My clothes are all packed up in this compression bag and it looks a bit bigger than normal and just because I'm moving here I added a couple more things which I wanted with me. My rain gear, I invested in this after Te Araroa because my rain pants sucked. They ripped on some style crossings and the rescue helicopter guys told me to get a red rain jacket or an orange one instead because they couldn't see my yellow rain jacket amongst the tussock when they came to pick me up. These are both Earthsea Sky, which is my favorite brand for hiking gear. 
and it just lasts and lasts and it's made in New Zealand so pretty hard to beat. My ultra shoes, they're like a mid boot and my Cedar Summit gaiters that I just bought. And people love them or hate them, but I love them. And these are my camp shoes, my Crocs. My sleeping bags in here, along with my inflatable pillow and a buff to use as a pillowcase. And I've also got a thermal liner, which adds some warmth to my sleeping bag. I just saw a bandicoot outside my window it was watching me film this um to go with my sleep setup this is my um what's it thermarest what do you call them sleeping pads this is my zpex tent it's a duplex so it technically can house two people but i like it for me and my gear it's pretty light as well about 600 grams and it's got some tent pegs in there as well these are my leaky hiking poles which i've just bought myself not too long ago and they also act as my tent poles and shout out to jane and her husband because they're part of the reason i have these hiking poles now the day has finally come i was too excited to sleep in so the bandicoots in western australia are known as quenda and after having breakfast with them, I got ready, packed up, and headed out the door. I got to the northern terminus of the Bivlin track, and I've started my journey now.